The Curved Corner Cutter by Creative Grids is one of my favorite tools. On three sides, it has the radius of a circle for a three inch, a one and a half, and a two inch round. The three radiuses on the corners of this ruler allow you to cut curves on your quilts and do very intricate looking borders very easily without having to go to your cupboard and rate it for plates and saucers and cups and anything you may have to create that curve. In this case of this burp towel, I used this corner and this was a square unit that I pieced using the Creative Grids 45 degree angle strip ruler and all I had to do was put this on the corner and rotary cut around it. So I got nice curved edges to my piece very quickly and easily. I did the same thing on this bib. Using a corner of the ruler, I cut the curve on the bottom edge of this bib and to, it really does give you a nice finish to the edges. This placemat is another example just by placing this on here. Not only does it add a nice curved edge to any piece, but it also allows you to do a continuous binding so you don't have to stop at the corners and do that turn that every quilter hates to do. So I can do it in one solid piece all the way around. Uh, if you use the larger curves, it is very gentle, so you do not have to use a bias binding to go around those curves. If you're using the smallest one, you definitely do. This is another quilt I created, and this is why I love this tool, because I love scalloped edges on quilts, but I don't like to bind them. So in this case, I cut the, the polka dot fabric, the width of the border, and all of this brown was applique onto that applique piece, and I'll show you how I created that. To create this border, I used a roll of freezer paper that I cut to the length of my entire border. And when I iron that strip of freezer paper that would be the whole length of the quilt on the wrong side of the fabric, I will trim the fabric away with a pair of scissors a quarter of an inch away from the top. And these are inside curves, so I will have to clip them a little bit. So it's going to be clipped, if you can see my clips there. And then I will just take a glue stick. I run it on the paper and the fabric so it is like a double-sided tape. And turn this down and I will have an heirloom quality finished top to my scallop. Then I take it to my project and literally glue it in place with the same glue stick and I took a narrow zigzag and a monofilament thread and stitched the scallop all the way around the outside of the quilt. So to create a quilt that has this beautiful scallop all around the outside edge only took about an hour and a half. I can change the depth of the scallop and the width of the scallop by simply changing the corner of the tool that I am using. In this case, I wanted a gentle scallop that was very easy to applique, so I chose this, the curve that was a two inch radius. Very simple and easy to do. When you get to the corners, it really doesn't matter what happens because the one that I do on this side is going to overlap the one that I cut for this side. So you'll always get a different type of an ending here, but it's always been pretty. It's just depending on the width of your border and where they overlap, but it still makes a very pretty design. So if you're going to do this, do it before you send it to your quilter so that she can do fancy quilting in each one of those scallops, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see, I can still use a straight binding, so my binding was very easy to do, but I have motion in this quilt.